Do you avoid crochet patterns that require sewing? I used to. I used to avoid it like the plague, but I'm here today to share with you reasons why sewing is not always a bad thing. And I'm gonna share my tips for seaming and sewing your crochet projects. All right, first off, if you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you're not new, thank you so much for coming back. My name is Michelle Ferguson. I am the crochet pattern designer of Two Brothers Blankets. You can find me at twobrothersblankets.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Two Brothers Blankets. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. And if you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up. And if you wanna be notified every time I upload a new video, click the bell at the top of your screen. All right. Sewing crochet patterns, sewing crochet projects, seaming, are they bad, are they good? Is the seam down the middle bad? Can sewing be avoided? All the questions um, that I wanna talk about today. I used to avoid sewing all the time. Um, when I was designing, when I was just crocheting something, if it required sewing, I would avoid it, honestly. And if, um, and when I was designing, I would do everything possible to create a design that did not require any sewing. It just seemed like such an added step and so much extra work. And what if they don't know how to crochet? I mean, sew and all that stuff. So I would just try to avoid it completely. But I've been designing for gosh, almost nine years. Um, it'll be nine years in January and I am constantly learning, constantly learning new things still to this day about designing, about crocheting, um, and about uh, the art of crochet. So in those nine years, I have learned that sewing and seams are not bad. They're not, I promise. Yes, they are an added step, but sometimes that added step is so worth it. So today I'm just going to share with you what I know about sewing and seaming, what I've learned, why it's not always a bad thing, why it can be a bad thing or an annoying thing, but sometimes it is so worth it and I'm gonna share that. So let's talk about what seaming is. Seaming is joining two or more pieces of crochet fabric together. Um, if you're doing that in rows, I guess, or if you're sewing it, I guess that would say. Seaming in the round is joining the beginning of your round to the end of your round to make a complete circle. Um, so you would do that with hats, with garments sometimes, um, scarves sometimes, like there's a lot of joining in the round. Um, and then when you are sewing your pieces together, seaming that way, you are taking um, most likely a fat, flat piece of crochet project that you've worked in rows and sewing it to another flat piece um, to create whatever you're creating. So um, why join um, in the round? Why, why bother? Why is that a thing? <laughs> um, sometimes you want to turn your work. Sometimes stitches look better front and back, um, or on the back, or, or together, like a herringbone stitch. A herringbone double crochet doesn't really create that herringbone look unless you turn every round or row, because um, you have your back stitches and then your, or your front stitches and your back stitches, and they go opposite ways, and it creates a um, herringbone look. Um, sometimes, you will join because of color changes. Sometimes there's a stitch change. Um, sometimes it's easier to tell front and back when there's a seam or a, or the end of your row, or, or I mean a round, a seam in the round. Um, why sew a pattern together, or pieces together when you can just join in the round? Well, for one, um, sometimes when you join in the round, you get a traveling seam. The dreaded traveling seam. I am dealing with that right now <laughs> while I remake the Houston hoodie. Um, and it is driving me 
crazy because I cannot figure out how to make it. There are tons and tons and tons of um, blog posts, YouTube videos, um, articles, all kinds of stuff about how to avoid that traveling seam. But the Houston hoodie switches stitches every round. So you do double crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, and it creates a traveling seam. So six years ago or whenever I, five years ago, whenever I originally designed it as a fairly newer designer, I just didn't care about the slanting seam, to be honest. I was like, well, it's in the back, oh well. Now that I know things, I would have most definitely created that pattern in two panels and sewed it together. So there were only there would only be a seam on the side and not the back traveling seam. Um, so that is one reason to sew instead of just join in the round. Um, sometimes the seam can be in strange places. I have patterns that are um, worked in the round from the bottom up and then split into panels for the to create the armholes. When you're doing that, you're joining in the round, you're turning and joining in the round, and it's in the back while you're working in the round, but when you split into panels, that's gonna put your seam right at the side, which is fine, it's not a big deal, and it's usually not, it's straight and pretty looking, or it is straight and pretty looking. Um, but it's just that one seam on the side. So some people may not like that now as I've got, it doesn't bother me too bad, not as much as the traveling seam, but it would be more even if there was seam on each side, like a shirt you would wear from the store. Um, so sometimes that's a reason to sew instead of seam, or instead of join. Um, sometimes it's easier to shape and construct a flat piece of work than it is to working in the round. Now. Early in my designer days, I thought it's easier to, it's just easier to do everything around. All you gotta do is increase or decrease, right? Which is true. And in some cases it's really, um, it really is better and easier. For instance, a top down raglan or circular yoke um, top is very easy to adjust in the waist and hips by adding, by increasing your stitches or whatever. Um, but things like the neckline, the um, the shape of the armholes, anything like that, sometimes it's just easier to do, to work in rows um, and then sew your pieces together. Um, also, we've talked about this before a little bit, it is easier to keep a consistent tension when working in the rows rather than the round, at least for me and at least for a lot of people I know that crochet. Um, it just, it's easier to keep that tension when you're working in the rows. When I work in the round, I tend to loosen up my tension as I go, cause I'm just going and going and going. And for some reason in rows, I mean, you have those two edges that you are keeping consistent, uh, consistently straight. You can see it when it starts to veer or whatever. Um, it's a lot easier to tell and to keep your tension consistent. So that's another reason why you may want to sew rather than just join in the ram. So um, all that said, sewing is not always a bad thing. I know that it is an added step, but sometimes it really helps with the construction of your garment of your sweater pattern or your top pattern. Um, and also seams are not terrible. Like I've never had an issue with seams, but I know people who have, who like don't want it, who want it to be seamless. And seamless is great. Seamless, if you can do seamless, that's awesome. Um, I have a few, I think uh, my tied and true tee. No, I don't know about that one. The Savannah sweater I do know is seamless. I just work in the continuous round for the majority of it. Um, and it's great, there's no seams on the whole sweater, and that's awesome, but that's not always possible. Sometimes you do need to turn your work, and sometimes you, so that means you need to join. You can't just keep going over and over in a continuous round. Um, and sometimes you just may need that seam for whatever reason, and that's not a bad thing, but I do have an issue with the traveling seam. I want a nice straight seam. Like I kept telling myself while I was working on that Houston hoodie, I would not buy a sweater at the store with a 
slanted seam right down the middle. <laughs> a regular seam, yes, that's fine. There's seams on all of our clothes um, everywhere. And that's fine. But I just, the traveling seam gets me. I'm going to get that figured out eventually somehow. Or maybe I'll just work it in rows and sew it instead. <laughs> we'll see. Um, but don't shy away from patterns that require sewing, um, patterns that have seams. It's okay. Sometimes it's just necessary. But I'm going to give you some tips to help you get the nicest looking seam for your project, whether that be sewing or joining in the round. So here's some tips. Okay, um, sewing tips, let's start with that. You've got two panels you've got to sew together to create a sweater. Um, what now? <laughs> so first you wanna have some good supplies. You wanna have a good yarn needle. You wanna have um, some sewing pins, good scissors, all that. So I use, I mean, you just gotta figure out what works for you. I think I got this at um, these metal ones at uh, Walmart or Michaels maybe. I've had them forever. I got this little case. It's a clover case. Uh, Amazon or We Crochet? I'm, I don't even remember, but it's a nice little case. And then I recently got these. I think these are clover. These are nice. They're bigger and they have the bent um, tip. These are nice for bulkier yarns um, for weaving in ends, sewing. I mean, put that bent tip somehow, it makes it much easier. Um, but also for sewing. Um, so you just gotta find some good ones that you like, that work for you. Um, I didn't grab my sewing pins, but just any pins that you can hold it down or pin it together while you're sewing are very helpful. And then some good scissors are always good as well. Um, so just experiment with get you some so we, there need to be yarn needles, darning needles. Um, it'll be harder to do it with the little tiny um, needles for sewing, but some good yarn needles, um, some good scissors, some pins, and just figure out what works best, which ones you like best for you. Um, also with the stitch. So the two main stitches used, maybe the only, they're the only ones I use. Um, when sewing, uh, crochet together is the whip stitch and the mattress stitch. So the mattress stitch for the most part is invisible, but I have had instances where um, it's not quite invisible with the stitch that I was, that I had used. So I had to use the whip stitch and the whip stitch actually looked better for that project um, because of the stitch that was used. And so sometimes you have to experiment with what stitch looks better. I usually try to go with the mattress stitch first, um, especially for a garment, but it doesn't always work out that way. So just experiment with which looks best. If you're finding that the mattress stitch isn't really like seamless or invisible looking um, or very, you know, it is pretty noticeable, you may want to try the whip stitch. So just that. Um, and then my third one for sewing your pieces, my third tip is to make sure you leave plenty of yarn on the on each end when you start and finish to weave in your ends and get those weaved in really well um, so that they don't come apart. I do have a how to crochet a sweater with two panels um, video coming soon. I'm starting this how to crochet a sweater series in the new year. Um, and the first one is going to be sewing rectangular, two rectangular panels together to create a sweater. So if you're still unsure about sewing and all that, be on the lookout for that because that will be like a demonstration of how I sew the panels together to create the sweater. So if you're still unsure. Okay, so now let's get into seaming in the round and some tips for seaming or for joining in the round and creating that seam in the round. Um, so most of the time, not always, most of the time turning in the round, so you're, you're working in the round, you join, you chain one or however many and you turn and work the other way. Most of the time that will keep a straight seam. Um, it's not always the case, but I have found the majority of the time, especially if I'm using the same stitch throughout, um, the whole pattern, like I said, with the Houston honey, it's two different, like each round is a different stitch that created the slanting. But um, if you're working in the same round, because what happens is it 
it's pulled one way and then it's pulled the other. So it kind of just keeps it straight along the way um, in whatever direction you're going. So it usually ends up being a straight seam if you're turning. That is one reason I do often like to turn when I'm working in the round, um, especially if I'm doing a bottom up and then I create panels, you have to turn in the panels. So you got to turn in the rounds too, so all the stitches will match. Um, okay, so second tip, another not always, but often if you slip stitch into the first stitch when joining, not the starting chain, um, you will get a nice straight looking seam. Um, I didn't write this down, but the long chain that I use for double crochet also helps with that. Um, and it, sometimes it even makes it like hardly visible um, using that long chain instead of like a chain two for a double crochet and then turning. I did that with my Aspen cardigan that I just remade. Um, and I, I posted about it on Instagram. Um, I need to put that in like a highlight, but it really just made it almost, almost seamless. Like, and it was perfectly straight and you could just barely notice the seam using that long chain and then turning. Um, and joining into the first stitch, not the chain. So that's another tip. Um, if you do get a traveling seam, now I tried this with mine, but like I said, it's two different stitches and you're working the same stitch. So let's say you're just doing double crochet in the round or half double crochet in the round. One thing I read online was that you can, so like for half double crochet, you're working in the round, you're joining each, um, each at the end to the first stitch. Um, and you're getting a slanted seam. Instead of joining to that first stitch, skip the first stitch. How did that work? Skip, no, when you're starting, skip the first stitch, work all the way around, then work over your starting chain into that first stitch. So your first stitch will then be your last stitch and then join to the second stitch and do that in the round. I will try to link that blog post that I found about it. I think it was Willa Made Creations Crochet. I'm not sure, um, but I read it and it did help, but it still was slanting. But that was only because like if, if I was doing all half double crochet, it would it would have worked but it was because I'm doing, I was alternating half double and double. Um, but try that. I'll link that. I'll try to find that post and link it in the description because I know I just butchered how to explain it. Um, but there's ways to do it where you're skipping a certain stitch or whatever, and it will avoid that slanting seam. Um, and like I said earlier, if you can, um, not always possible, but if you can, uh, work in a continuous round and then you won't have a seam and that'll be seamless. The best way to do that is to use a good stitch marker to mark your first stitch so you know where you're at um, and you can just keep going until you get to the length you, ne length you need that works often for top down. Sometimes you can get away with it in a top down pattern because um, then you're not having to join um, or you're not having to make any specific like sewing spots or you know change in panels into panels from the round for armholes or all that you're usually just folding over and skipping stitches to create your armholes so you don't necessarily need a seam and so sometimes it works out that you can work in the continuous round sometimes that works out for hats too also um so give that a try too. If some, usually the designer, if you're following a pattern, the designer will tell you if it can be worked in continuous round or not. Um, so just follow that pattern and it should all work out. Um, but like I said, a seam is not bad. It's really not. Um, sewing is not bad. Sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes it's best for the construction of the garment. Um, if Even if there's like a straight seam down the back from joining or wherever, that's fine. It's okay. Um, you have seams on your regular clothes too. So I'm just, I guess this is just my spiel to uh, help you not shy away from patterns that do require sewing. Um, yeah, it's, it is an extra step, but once you get to, once you get it down, it doesn't take long. Um, and it's usually like just up the sides or wherever to create. Sometimes hats are folded and sewn in the back. Um, to create the hat, whatever, it, you know, it doesn't, 
always, once you get a hang of it, it doesn't take long and it really helps with the construction of the sweater or the item that you're making. Um, so don't be afraid to sew and don't be afraid to seam um, or to join, join in the round and create a scene. Don't avoid seams, <laughs> I guess is what I'm saying. They're not all bad. Um, do avoid the slanting seam. I don't like those. I don't know. So anyways, um, let me know. What do you think? Do you avoid seams? Um, has this changed your mind at all? Um, and what questions do you have about sewing or seaming? Hopefully I can answer them as far as sewing goes in um, the How to Crochet a Sweater series and give you some more tips and stuff on that for sewing and seams because a lot of them are going to have I like to join and turn. So most of my patterns do have a seam down the back or along the sides. So yeah, that's just how it goes sometimes. Um, I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Please subscribe to the channel and I will be back again next week for another crochet related video. Have a great week.